The Horns offense begins with two high posts, two in the corners, and a point guard. The first option we will cover in this video is the flex, which starts with a cut through the middle of the floor by the point guard, followed by a flex screen and down screen. Now I know the flex is a basic offense, but running it out of the horn set provides modern spacing to the ancient offense that we all know, and allows for some very interesting actions that we will cover in this video. If the defender doesn't help, like Ty Lawson in the video right now, then the flex screen should get you a bucket. And again, Steph Curry provides zero help here on the flex screen in the net score. Now the flex is especially effective with the guard setting the initial flex screen because it makes it more difficult for the defense to switch. And I don't know about you, but on my team, we would rather have a big set a down screen for a guard than vice versa. As you see here in some WNBA action, the point guard sets a flex screen, then receives a down screen from a big girl, which allows her to make a play off the dribble. Up next is an extremely unique intro into the flex, which starts with the screen away, and then the screeny declines the screen and goes to set the flex screen on the other side of the floor. This is from Chris Holtman, who now coaches at the Ohio State University. As all of us coaches know, the flex can get pretty monotonous and boring, so this is a great way to spice it up with a unique intro. Here's the Seattle Storm running Horns Flex with a cross screen entry. The initial flex screen is declined and ends up with a nice slip to the rim for an easy bucket. And here is some early Chris Paul footage on the New Orleans Hornets. Yes, I repeat, the New Orleans Hornets. Now time for things to get even more interesting. Here, the guard sets a flex screen, which is followed by a down screen, like normal. But it's followed into a dribble handoff, which eventually leads to Brittany Griner making a beautiful post move to get to the free throw line. This offense is used all the time in the NBA and WNBA. It's an effective option because it puts the same defender in multiple consecutive screening actions. Mike D'Antoni, coach of Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns and former coach of the year, ran this offense and had one of the best offenses in the league. It puts the point guard's defender between a rock and a hard place. Do I help on the flex screen? Or do I stick to my player and don't help? Now the circle defender that you're about to see on the screen is in a tough position. What is he supposed to do? He hesitates for just a moment and that allows for Jameer Nelson to make a play. NBA stars such as Damian Lillard and Demarcus Aldridge have gotten buckets with this offense. Now most teams do not have those stars, but if you maintain good spacing and move the ball, this offense will work. And up next is the Lob City Clippers, who have a unique play design where they add in an additional ball screen. And lastly for the flex option, here you have a dribble handoff on the strong side of the floor instead of going with the flex action on the weak side of the floor. And for the second option, it's a ball screen. A ball screen is pretty simple, and the horn set allows for the paint to be wide open as you see and it makes sense why having two high posts would open up the middle of the floor if there's no offense near the rim well then there's no defense near the rim because there is two high posts it puts the corner defenders in tough position if the screener decides to not roll and decides to pop then the other high post should dive to the rim as you see here, it works perfectly because of the spacing. Here's another example from the New Orleans Pelicans where the diver gets a nice easy bucket. In this example, Timothy Moskov is rolling and Kevin Love is staying high because he's the better shooter. And this is a nice example of Andre Drummond getting the ball and attacking a closeout off the high post. Now the magic of the Horns offense is what does the high post do when he gets the ball? In most cases, the high post should pass to the wing and follow with a ball screen or just do a dribble handoff and dribble at the wing. Perhaps the best part about the Horns offense is that you need big men and guards. You need two high posts. You need one low post and one high post that can kind of shoot. 
you need two shooters for the corners, and you need a point guard to set everything up. As you see here, Kevin Love is doing a handoff with J.R. Smith and Timothy Mozgov is posting up down low at the same time. Instead of standing for a ball reversal, the opposite high post can set a re-screen for the guard. After receiving a first screen, the opposite high post goes and sets another ball screen for the guard. A lot of times, NBA programs call this twist. Here is old Lob City doing it and JJ Redick lifting for a nice easy three. Here's Kyrie Irving and Timothy Moskov with the rescreen where Kyrie Irving makes a tough mid range jumper and Steph Curry coming off the screen for a nice easy layup. The last option for the ball screen series is a flare screen after the ball screen. This is particularly effective because most of the time, the post defender will help on the ball screen while not knowing there is a flare screen coming up next. On this play, the offense does a great job at attacking the closeout off of the horns flare screen. And for this final play, I love this play because of the amount of ball movement and the action and the continuity and especially the bucket. That's it for the horn series. Thank you for watching.